The 1918 influenza was incredibly deadly, killing 50 million people worldwide. Yet while young, healthy adults experienced exceptionally high mortality, the fatality rate in children and the elderly was not notably higher than what was experienced in regular influenza epidemics. Fatality rates were also relatively low in the first wave of the epidemic in the spring of 1918 and in the entire country of China. The variable that separates the times, locations, and age groups that experienced high versus low mortality is not the virus they were infected with, but rather how much aspirin they consumed. Aspirin was heavily advertised in August 1918 and officially recommended by the U.S. government for influenza in September. As doctors began dosing large amounts of aspirin, fatality rates suddenly began soaring. Everyone has their own threshold for aspirin poisoning, and the poisoning threshold may change with daily circumstances and disease. We know now that acidic urine prevents clearance of aspirin from the body, and illness can increase urine acidity, especially if fever is suppressed with medication. The doses of aspirin that were recommended in the United States were high enough to kill at least 3% of the population outright by directly causing pleural effusion into the lungs, a rapid and dangerous pneumonia, as well as internal bleeding and breathing difficulties. Aspirin also increases susceptibility to bacterial pneumonia. Many of the young adults who are dying in these ways are being treated with high doses of aspirin. While older adults are more likely to reject the newfangled medicine, children's aspirin did not yet exist, and most citizens of China were treated only with traditional herbals. Today, in contrast, daily low-dose aspirin is embraced by both the elderly and the Chinese, and there is a suggestive parallel between the rates at which different populations use aspirin and the rate at which they are dying from COVID-19. What if COVID-19, in conjunction with other environmental factors and pharmaceuticals, increases urine acidity, decreasing the clearance of aspirin. Older populations who frequently take daily aspirin are dying at the highest rates, while children who are advised to never take aspirin while ill are experiencing mild illness. Even tiny babies do not seem to be at risk of fatality. Men who take more aspirin and ACE inhibitors than women are at higher risk. People with a history of heart disease who are most likely to be on aspirin therapy have nearly twice the risk of death from COVID-19 as people with chronic lung disease. In fact, doctors no longer recommend daily aspirin for most adults, based on recent research showing negative or null effects, and many people are currently taking it without being medically advised to do so. Doctors and patients need to work together to ensure that any unnecessary aspirin is not being used during the pandemic or by patients who are currently ill. In our companion video, we will discuss why other fever medications need to be avoided. The fever and immune system need to be able to do their job.